Well, we got rid of the chopper. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wash this off. Most of you probably don't even know what this is, but this is a cutter head to the front mower on one of our pottinger mowers. My brother was cutting hay and he didn't notice that there was a big tree limb down and uh, he cut into that and when the spinner went around it bent I don't know if it bent the turtle down or if just the knife got screwed up or what but it took a chunk out of the cutter head right here so we need to wash this off get it all cleaned up and then we've got to pull all these hubs out and the reason why we need to pull them out is we need to search inside this cutter head and make sure there's not any pieces down inside there so i'm hoping i find something because if i don't there's quite a bit of spots quite a few spots that it can hide all the way down and through uh this cutter head so we're gonna get this washed off search inside it and then we're gonna weld that closed and um yeah we'll store this away for when we need it next time we had to buy a new cutter head um so that we can continue cutting we've got two pottinger triple mowers and uh this happened to the newer one so we'll go ahead and show you what's going on in the other side of the shop here jared's got some time now to work on this 8110 and he's putting hoses on it and alex and sarah have been helping him he wants to paint this as well alex and sarah swapped out this weight bracket pulled all the weights off of it took that bracket off that we had a numb skull run into the bunk wall and when he ran into the bunk wall it pushed the weights back and when it pushed it back it broke uh, this bottom section of the weight bracket we moved the weights over took them off moved them over and just dealt with it for several years Jared's got to use cab. He's got to put on this 8110. If you haven't been following along, he rebuilt the engine in this tractor. Uh, the cab was rotted out. Pulled the cab off and took all of the hydraulic hoses off of it. Brake lines, everything. All of that stuff came off. So he's got the new brake lines in there. Um, we figured now was the best time to paint this. They have sanded the rims down months ago. But um, now we're just getting the time to put a few minutes worth of work into it. So we've got Alex down here on the inside right wheel. Sarah's, let's see, she's working on the engine block axe front axle and what have you and jared's muscling in uh steering valve right now trying to get some of them hoses to line up he has put plastic coating uh loom on all of the hoses and everything is just i don't know a little stiff isn't it bob so well, we're going to get to washing. And then they put the loader on this 7710 the other day, and I said, you know what we should do? We should probably replace all of these hoses. Well, he said that was a pretty good call because they blew a hose when they put the loader on the tractor. So, at any rate, it is what it is. So we've got some bales of hay, some hay that we're going to try to bale, and um, we thought we would use the loader to load bales with. So, yeah, well, let's get to worshiping.
You guys don't want to do any washing, do you? No, no, no. No, you'd rather do some sand, do not? Yes, so. so, all right. I'll go out and be a slave to the presser washer. The presser washer. All right. We have this cutter head all cleaned up. And I am draining the oil out of it right now. There's a plug on either side. Once the oil gets done draining, then we can pull these hubs off. What I want to do is pull this one off first, these two, and see if there's a piece down in there that we can find. Uh, there very well might not be anything in there, but we have to open it up and make sure. So there's an idler gear on each one of these spots here. And what we have to do is check in underneath each and every one of them to make sure there isn't any foreign debris inside this gear case. If there is something in there, it's going to come back to haunt us. So we'll let this get drained out and then we will take all these off of here. About all that is going to drain out of this head has drained out and into this pail here i think it holds like three quarts or something like that so there was a little bit of oil in there already uh, all the oil that came out was clean except it had a little bit of water in it i mean it's kind of obvious we're open a little bit right here so we're going to get two spinners off Best case scenario is we find the piece. Worst case scenario is it fell out. We search through the whole thing, don't find nothing, and then something appears that was underneath one of these gears. So we'll go ahead and take these two spinners off and look down in there. I've got a magnet that I can go down in there with and we'll see if we can't dig some material out but i'm afraid we're going to end up having to take all of these spinners off just to check down in there to make sure it's not hidden somewhere in this unit here so each one of these spinner well well we'll show you there's idler gears here and then everything kind of runs together to spin it drives from one end and it has to transfer that power and movement down to uh, the other end here. Well, 
this is somewhat unfortunate, but it looks as though we're going to have to take all the spinners off, and I'm almost thinking we're going to have to drop all of these gears out as well. So, yeah, it looks like this is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but we'll get it. All right, we've got all of our spinners removed. I went all through this whole head with a magnet. I didn't come up with anything, nothing, not even a, a sliver of metal stuck to that magnet. There isn't any way for a piece that big to get underneath any of these gears. They all roll freely. And I'm thinking that this piece just got broken out of the head. So I've got it marked. We're going to cut it with the we're going to clean that up with the plasma cutter and then we've got a piece of quarter inch material over here on the bench. We're going to go ahead and cut that out with the saw and then we'll go ahead and cut the cutter head out and we'll set this down in there and we'll weld it all into place. So why don't we go ahead and cut the cutter head out first what we need to do is just clean up the head a little bit or clean up that hole a little bit so we can match it a little better with a square piece of metal rather than trying to cut a piece of metal to fit that hole there Okay, now we're just gonna go over here and cut this with the Milwaukee metal cutting saw. Now you might be asking, why don't you just go with the plasma cutter? Plasma cutter's over there, the saw is right here. See if this fits what I'm gonna need to do is probably clean this hole up a little bit I've just got to take that back a little bit right there with the grinder clean these edges up a little bit just so I can get this piece to fit down in there very nicely and then we'll have to grind all of this paint off as well
simple as that. We're gonna let that cool down. We'll grind it down. In the meantime, we're going to pull all, put all of our spinners back on. We actually have to do a little cleanup down here. A little bit of water in with that oil, so we're gonna throw some gas in there. Mix that up a little bit. Oh, and I've gotta, I gotta get that plug out too, so. We'll just weld a nut on there and we can get that plug out. We better, I tried turning that with a wrench. We better wait for that to cool. That is a fill, an oil fill plug. So we better let that cool just so we don't score, uh, screw up our threads. So we'll go ahead and clean all of this up. I'm gonna go in and out of this hole here with a magnet, pick up any little filings and whatnot. And then uh, we'll pour some gas down in this, down that end just to kind of flush this out and clean it up. And then I want to get all these spinners back on there before I go to grinding because I don't want any of these sparks down in there if I can help it. So here we are. I didn't end up putting any of the spinners back in there. I left them out. I ground down the area where we welded that patch in there. I also welded a nut onto this fill plug. This is where you fill this cutter head with oil. I was originally going to take that right out while it was hot. It didn't want to turn that great. So I said, you know what, it's probably expanded the plug too much. So we'll let that go ahead and cool. So while we've been waiting for that to cool, I ended up going down through here with a blow gun. And I blew the whole head out all the way around every gear, blew all, any, any of the debris that was in there, we blew it to that end. Then I poured some gas in here and I did the same thing with the gas. I pushed all of the gas down through, everything drained down into the bucket. Now we'll go ahead and get this plug out. Once we get the plug out, we'll just have to get a new one of those. We'll use this. Well, I don't think I can use this uh, once we get the spinner on. I think the spinner is going to be in the way. But we'll have to get a new plug. We'll get all of the spinners on there, fill it with oil, and uh, get a new plug for it. And then we can put this in a barn somewhere or something, get it inside so that we can use it at a future date. So let's go ahead and get this plug out. And then we'll put the spinners on. Okay. 
Well, we've got this all welded up. I splashed some paint on there. I put all the spinners back on, except this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and fill the cutter head with oil. We've got our plugs in on both ends. This is the fill port right here. We need to get a new one. So we're just going to fill it right through the spinner hole itself. On these heads, they're not like a John Deere cutter head. A John Deere cutter head has a sight gauge here on either side, and you could just kind of wipe the sight gauge off, and you can look in there to see how much oil is in your cutter head. This one, uh, really the only way to check it is to drain it and then fill it with, a, with, a, with the recommended amount. Now this one here, is, it's recommended that you put three and three quarters quarts in it. So we've got four quarts. We're going to empty a quarter of a quart out of one, and then we're going to dump the rest of them in full. And then we'll put our spinner back on. And then we'll have to put this inside somewhere um, so that when we need it, it's all ready to go. We have left these outside before and the trouble is, is uh, water can get into uh, the head. So you want to keep them inside under cover just so that you don't end up with any moisture inside that cutter head. So we'll go ahead and get the oil in there and we'll put our spinner back on and we'll join up with you when we get that done. Well, we got a little sloppy with one of them containers. I spilled a little bit, so I compensated for that by what we poured out of that one container here. We've got all these spinners on there. Now you might be saying, geez, you gotta get them in time, don't you, Andy? Well, these are in time. So there is a countersunk where the, the spinner goes on to here, and out of these four holes, there's a countersunk uh, hole. You can kind of see that it's tapered. One goes back, one goes forward. So we've got number one, all the odd ones are back. All of the even ones are forward, centered. So we've got them all in time. We've got the oil in it. And we splashed a little bit of paint on there and we are all set to go here. So that is gonna do it for this video. I wanna thank 
you guys for watching and we're gonna roll into the next project which is this truck this truck has been waiting for me to get to it here for quite a little while so we're gonna go ahead and get a hoist on there get a PTO a pump air controls rail system the whole nine yards so we're gonna get on it here so take it easy folks we will catch you at the next one